Have you ever wondered why scientists keep saying, DNA is the code of life? It sounds fascinating, but also mysterious. How can something so small, a thin thread-like structure, decide your skin tone, your hair color, even how tall you might grow? The secret lies in two powerful processes, transcription and translation. Think of DNA as the master blueprint of your body. But blueprints can't build a house on their own, they need workers. That's where transcription comes in. In this step, DNA makes a working copy of its instructions, called messenger RNA, or mRNA. Then, ribosomes, the cell's protein factories, step in for translation. They read the mRNA code and build proteins according to the instructions. And here's the key. Proteins are what actually give you your traits. For example, proteins that produce melanin control your skin and hair color. Structural proteins shape your body, enzymes power your metabolism, and hormones regulate your growth. So, when we say DNA, codes for life, what we really mean is, DNA writes the instructions, transcription makes a copy, and translation brings those instructions to life, one protein at a time. When we put all of this together, DNA making RNA, and RNA making proteins, the entire flow of information is called the central dogma of molecular biology. It's the guiding principle that explains how your genetic code becomes you. So let's dive into the first step, transcription. Transcription is like photocopying a page from the master blueprint. But there is an issue. DNA stays safely inside the nucleus, and the cell still needs its instructions outside, in the cytoplasm. To solve this, the cell makes a copy of the gene it needs, not the whole DNA, just the relevant section. Let's understand this process in three main steps. Initiation, elongation and termination. Our first step is initiation. Initiation, the first step of transcription. This is where the process actually begins. But what do we need for it to happen? Three main things. DNA, the blueprint, from which the gene has to be copied. RNA polymerase, the enzyme that does the copying. And nucleotides, the building blocks for the new RNA strand. Now, remember, DNA is a double helix, made of two strands but only one strand is transcribed. This is called the template strand, or the antisense strand. The opposite one is the coding strand, or the sense strand. Here's a question for you. If the coding strand already looks like the RNA we want, then why does RNA polymerase copy the opposite strand instead? Think about it. I'll reveal the reason in a moment. First, let's see how RNA polymerase gets started. Transcription always occurs in the 5 to 3 direction. It begins at a specific site on the DNA called the promoter, a short sequence, usually about 50 base pairs, located near the transcription start site. The promoter is essential because it tells RNA polymerase exactly where to begin. A classic feature of many promoters is the Tata box, found about 25 to 35 bases upstream from the start site. In eukaryotic cells, Initiation begins when general transcription factors and RNA polymerase 2 bind to the promoter, forming what's called a pre-initiation complex. Once this complex is assembled, the DNA strands are separated at the start site, and RNA polymerase is positioned perfectly to begin synthesizing mRNA. And with that, the stage is set for the next step, elongation. Elongation, the second step of transcription. This is where the real action begins, the actual synthesis of mRNA. Once the transcription factors have done their job and correctly positioned RNA polymerase at the promoter, RNA polymerase moves forward along the template strand of DNA. Here's how it works. The DNA double helix unwinds just ahead of the polymerase, opening up a small transcription bubble. Inside this bubble, RNA polymerase reads the DNA template strand one base at a time. Complementary RNA nucleotides are added, forming the growing mRNA chain. But here's something important. Unlike DNA, RNA doesn't contain thymine. Instead, it uses uracil, 
So whenever the DNA template has adenine, RNA polymerase adds uracil in its place. As elongation continues, the mRNA strand does not remain bound to the DNA template. Instead, it peels away, while the DNA helix immediately zips back together behind the moving enzyme. RNA polymerase keeps sliding along the template, building the mRNA strand in the 5 to 3 direction, nucleotide by nucleotide. In eukaryotes, this process can create transcripts thousands of bases long. Think of it like a typewriter that never stops, moving forward, unzipping, copying, and sealing the DNA behind it, while producing a fresh ribbon of RNA. And with elongation in full swing, we're now heading toward the final stage of transcription, termination. Once RNA polymerase II finishes copying the gene, it doesn't stop immediately. Instead, it keeps moving forward, transcribing extra bases beyond the coding region, almost like a typewriter that keeps pressing keys even after the sentence has ended. But within this extra stretch lies an important signal, a short sequence in the RNA called the polyadenylation signal, and it tells the cell, the useful part of the transcript ends around here. At this stage, proteins called cleavage factors step in. They recognize the signal and cut the RNA strand just a little downstream. This separates the fresh RNA transcript from the polymerase. Meanwhile, RNA polymerase II continues along the DNA for a short distance, producing extra RNA that has no real function. Eventually, it falls off the DNA, and the double helix snaps back into place. Remember we asked why RNA copies the template strand instead of the coding strand? Now you'll see, by copying the opposite strand, the RNA ends up with the same sequence as the coding strand, except with U instead of T. In other words, the coding strand represents the gene, but the template strand is what makes transcription possible. Now comes the finishing touch. An enzyme called polyapolymerase adds a long tail made of adenine bases, about 100 to 250 of them. This polyar tail protects the RNA, helps it leave the nucleus, and prepares it for translation. The result is a brand new pre-mRNA, essentially the first draft of the gene. But before it can be used, this draft needs editing. Through post-transcriptional modifications, the pre-mRNA is capped, spliced, and fitted with a poly-A tail. Only then does it become a mature mRNA molecule, ready to exit the nucleus and guide the process of protein synthesis. This mRNA now leaves the safety of the nucleus through tiny gateways in the nuclear membrane called nuclear pores. Once in the cytoplasm, the message is ready for the next big step. Translation.